identifying as a pastor that you got some issues. <laughs> and you know, you knew the issues were there before, but you never really honed in on them. I found myself in that paradox. I found myself against that wall of how do I pastor my own home? This life puts you so against the wall sometimes that you question God. You probably know the whole story. Everybody tells you you're gonna be a pastor. And you're like, okay, right, whatever. I don't know what you're seeing. Maybe you're drinking as much as I'm drinking, but uh, I'm, there's no way God will make me a pastor of his church. My name is Lewis York, and I'm uh, currently the pastor at Excellent Praise World Outreach Ministries down in the Fort Mitchell, Phoenix City, Columbus, Georgia area. Me and my wife, we're, we're both from, uh, we currently live in Fort Mitchell, Alabama, which is about two hours south of here. Uh, in the Columbus, Georgia area. And we're up here in Atlanta while she gets her girl day today. Um, so I'm just riding with her. Uh, it's good to be retired. <laughs> My wife has gotten eight years in the Army. I've got 20, about 22, 21 and a half years in. I just retired in 2012. And uh, loving life as a veteran. Um, during the time of uh, our military experience, uh, neither, both, neither my wife nor I were saved. We were, <laughs> you know, dealing with issues and all these other things. Um, and so I know for me, just speaking for me, I, I, I looked at salvation as a, uh, a way to save my marriage. Not knowing that it was much more than that and it wasn't necessarily there to save my marriage. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I, was, I got saved, um, gave my life to God, to Christ. Um, and from there, it, 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 it seemed like it was easy. Here I am, a, a father that grew up in a single parent home myself, so didn't know how to father because I never really saw an example. And so here I am at a young age, fathering three children. Here I am at a young age, uh, trying to be a husband to a wife. And so it was pretty hard, and I was a soldier. So uh, that was hard by itself. So. <laughs> Pushing forward some more years, we, uh, I was a minister at the time. I came back from Iraq, and my wife had already joined a church, this other church, we was having some issues in it, and I didn't want my family to be stressed out from that. They were already worrying about me in the war zone. So I told them, I said, go ahead and join that church. I came back, joined it, loved it. We were there for about a year. So 2008, here I am as a pastor <laughs> in the Fort Mitchell area, still active duty, um, but still trying to passionate about it, on fire, um, and, and wanting to do it, wanting to do it not for the fame or the fortune, but wanting to help people. What's different about me um, is that I was a soldier before, so you know, we're taught to identify, you know, uh, be cognizant of your surroundings, blah blah blah, all of this. But I wasn't really cognizant of my surroundings. Um, Heard one gentleman talked about, you know, and the Bible says this, you know, how can you really pastor a, another man's church or another man's family without having pastored your own? You know, the children are pushing away. I was very aggressive um, and very frustrated and very angry. Um, and this was a carryover from before, uh, before the military, in the military. And so now I'm bringing this into pastorship. And, I don't think I was showing it as much or, or treating the, the congregation that way, but I know definitely I was treating my family that way. Um, more ty tyrannical uh, and, and so pushing them away. And so they're looking at me preach God's word on a Sunday and a Tuesday, but not really living it throughout the week. And so that, it wasn't really a focus for me then. I was more of do what I say, but over the years, and I guess as they started leaving the house, I started understanding and really identifying that I messed up. But I do know this, that God requires us to do what his word says and to pastor our families and to be a good father and to be a good shepherd and a priest in your home. And so I, st I questioned God about that. God, how do I do that? And uh, and it seems like I'm failing at home, man. And so went to Bosnia, went to Iraq, um, and really didn't, really didn't realize that I, I had PTSD. Didn't, 
think that. I knew I, I had some anger issues, um, but really didn't think it was a big problem. I just said, thought it was, hey, I just want it my way. I'm the, I'm the father, I'm the dad, I'm the pastor, and it's gonna be this way, and that's it. Um, and so it, it did damage some things. It, 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 it causes walls to be built that should not be built. Um, it pushes, pushes people away. This life puts you so against the wall sometimes that you question God. Not about things so much as about yourself. You know, and um, question God like, God, really me? Is it me? <laughs> um, and to the point now with the PTSD, uh, you know, it's like, God, you sure you still want me? Um, even to the point, that, that's such a good question. Even to the point that I, I even ask God, is my time up? Should I just bow out stage left gracefully? He'll take care of our mess. <laughs> he's been taking care of our mess since the beginning and uh, he's never stopped. And he knew about our mess before we was in a mess. Uh, so I think when we focus on the will of God and focus on those things, on those pieces, God will take care of the rest. It makes you cry. It makes you ball up your fists and say, why, you know? Um, but I believe that God has the last say.